Hi Sandy, welcome back to Branding You. You're now at volume two. This is about your future brand. What is it that you want your brand to be? What is it that you want to put out there? What do you want for yourself in the future? Andy Kelly, CEO, Sundial Consulting. Hopefully now you've been through volume one, you've created that self-awareness, you've had some time to think about yourself, what you value, what you're proud of, who inspired you, your strengths, your areas of development, etc., etc. That's certainly going to help you in this stage. People tell us that um, finding their future, finding their career path is probably one of the hardest things they do. And uh, we get a lot of phone calls about that and we try and help people with that conundrum. Um, certainly younger people find it really hard. You know, they're often pressured into finding their passion in life and choosing their major for college and their first role, their first part of their career. And you don't really know yourself. You haven't really learned about yourself yet. And people are asking you what you're passionate about. Um, I don't think that works. But what we do want you to do is start to think about what is the brand that you want to put out there? What is it you want people to start saying about you differently? You know, as you looked at your past and you looked at the things that you really liked about yourself, which, which ones of those superpowers or strengths are you going to amplify? Okay, and how are you going to do that? Um, which areas of blind spot or opportunity for your development do you want to work on and change? Right, that you start hearing people say different things about you. Um, that's really important. Um, if you are lucky enough and you have had some experience, maybe you can think about something that's more aspirational than passion. You know, aspirational is things that, where you feel happy, where you can breathe, you're doing your best work. You know, I often ask that person, uh, people that question, you know, think back to your last week or two, which day was it when you felt the best? What were you actually doing in the moment when you felt great? And try and think about that and try and think about how that could take you forward to your career path, to your future, to your new brand. Some people tell us that they've been put in a box that they can't get out. The company or their colleagues have put them in the box and they've given them a certain brand. I often turn that back on the people. Is that actually something you've done? You know, I get a lot of people that tell me, um, I want to be seen as a leader in this company, but I'm now just Mr. or Mrs. Special Projects. I just get given all the tough stuff. They helicopter me in and I turn it around and then they give me another one. I'm like, okay. And what did you lead with when you came into this company? What did you lead with when you came into that role? Well, I'm really good at special projects. <laughs> I'm really good at turning things around. I'm really getting things fixed. Um, you know, we're often put in a box because of the way we're showing up, the way that we're behaving, right? And I want you to think about that. So what is that new brand that you're looking for? And what would the behaviors be that you would need to display where people would start talking about you differently? We also get hung up at this point when people tell me, well, Andy, I kind of, I've got a dream. Um, I want to be more politically engaged. I want to be more involved with stakeholders. Um, I want to be on executive programs, but I don't want to be inauthentic. I don't want to look like I'm being fake, that I'm not being myself. You know, what's got me here is strong values and an execution and delivery. And I don't want to take that away. And the thing I'd like you to think about, if that's you, is this is going to be your new authentic self. Right? You're going to build some new behaviours, you're going to build some new muscle and some new habits, and it's going to become the new you. And that is authentic. You're not pretending. Okay, You're just searching. You're searching for that new you, and that's fine. You're allowed to be a work in progress. And you're allowed to play with it. You know, as you experiment new behaviours, you're not committing to that being that new person. You're just trying it out and see what makes you happy and what is successful and what's good for your team and what's good for the business. Okay, so please don't get hung up with that. You know, people say fake it till you make it. That's exactly right. <laughs> you're trying, you're experimenting, you're practicing, you might fail. You know, and people will probably try and hold you back, especially if people are uncomfortable about change. If people are uncomfortable about change, they don't want anyone changing around them. You know, when I came back from the chasm, when I got my feedback, one part of it was about that I was a bit of a joker, that I prioritised fun, and I did. I just wanted to have fun in everything that I did. It's a very core value that I have. Um, but it wasn't helping me and it wasn't helping others. So I tried to show up a little bit more professional. I tried to reduce the amount of gags that I put into a meeting. Um, and it was starting to work. 
but people were like, hey, what's gone on? Where's Andy? We want him back. You know, you're not as fun as you used to be. And I'm like, no, I'm not. And it's not just that I wanted to change my brand. I realized that I was having an impact on other people. Me joking around was one, not very effective and wasting time. But also it was quite intimidating to people, right? I had a personality that I got listened to and I took up a lot of the air in the room and other people couldn't get in and they couldn't get their points in. And that really upset me when I understood that, when I really understood the impact it was having on them. So you're gonna to have to push through that, okay? But the idea is, is that you practice. And this branding is so important. As I said to you before, people won't just go on the data. They won't just look at what you've delivered, if they're even looking at all. There's a thing called the availability bias. And you, if you think about this in your career, you would have seen it play out. People listen to the things that are the pictures and the stories that they've recently heard and that are easy for them to recall in their brain, okay? And that is part of branding. You wanna make sure that you're always present, that people are talking about your stories. There's pictures and PowerPoints about what you've done and people can see that and it's easy and it's in their face and it starts to build their brand rather than you delivered 10 times the number and you delivered all of your KPIs on time. You need to do that as well, <laughs> but the branding is also important. So this is a really hard time finding your future, thinking about your aspiration, thinking about the new brand that you wanna start walking and talking. Use your friends and family to help you. Don't try and do it on your own. It's really good to do it in a collaborative way, okay? So that's it for today. In the next session, we're going to talk about the development that you're going to need to undertake to get to that brand, the things that you're going to need to amplify and the things that you're going to need to tweak or change to become that new brand. And the last one will be how you're going to market that brand. But for now, thanks for listening. Andy Kelly, CEO, Sundial Consulting. We hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, please share it with your friends and let us know with a like or a comment. But more importantly, please subscribe on the button below. And also, if you really don't wanna miss out on any of our great insights from me and my team, please also click the little bell. Okay, we look forward to speaking to you soon. For now, Andy Kelly, Sundar Consulting. Thank you.